years after the Great Hyperspace War, after the defeat of the Sith and their exile to the unknown regions, one world, Droman Kos, would be the catalyst of the Sith's return. Led by a single emperor over the course of a thousand years, Droman Kos and the Sith that would inhabit the planet would slowly build their empire. Unknown to the Republic and the rest of the galaxy, a Mandalorian, self-proclaimed the ultimate, would stumble across the secret empire. Indoctrinated by the Emperor himself, Mandalore the Ultimate returned to Republic space, declaring war against her people. The war that followed would be the bloodiest since the days of the Sith. And yet, the Guardians of the Republic, the noble Jedi Knights, chose not to intervene. Two young, powerful, and promising Jedi Knights would disregard the orders of their council, taking it upon themselves to defeat the Mandalorians. Their names were Alec and Revan. Revan quickly became a notable and respected general, a master strategist, a skilled warrior. With the help of other Jedi and Republic soldiers that wanted to fight, Revan defeated the Mandalorians, cutting down Mandalore the Ultimate in single combat and destroying Malachor V at the expense of his own soldiers, ensuring victory. Revan and his followers would venture into the unknown regions as well, but the result would be the same. Revan and Alec returned as self-proclaimed Sith Lords, Darth Revan and Darth Malak. Together, they reigned a terror even greater than that of the Mandalorians, embedding the roots of a Sith Empire within Republic space once more. But like a true Sith, Darth Malak would betray Revan. During an ambush by a Jedi strike team led by Basila Shan, Malak fired upon Revan's ship instead of helping. Revan was mortally injured in the impending explosion, but Shan would help him escape. Bastila Shan and the other Jedi Masters decided to wipe Revan's mind clean. In time, he would be retrained as a Jedi under the guidance of Bastila and the Masters of Dantooine. In due course, Revan would defeat his former ally Darth Malak, bringing peace to the galaxy and redemption to himself. But Revan would be plagued by visions of Droman Kos. Though his power returned, his memories did not. His investigations into the visions would ultimately lead him back into the Unknown Regions, where he was held hostage by the Sith Empire for 300 years. Sustained by the mental powers of the Sith Emperor, Revan would eventually return to Republic space. He was hell-bent on bringing down Emperor Vitiate and his empire by any means necessary. Backed by neither the Sith nor the Jedi, Revan would become delusional to the point that his own spirit split in two. One of the dark that remained in the physical world, the other of the light that remained in the spiritual. In time, a team of the best Jedi and Sith grouped together to take down the Dark Revan once and for all. Though his legacy ended in semi-insanity, Revan was still marked as one of the greatest force sensitives of all time, a unique master of the light and dark. While Revan was imprisoned by the Sith Emperor, there was another man, Veridun, later known as Darth Malgus, that would also rise to prominence. Malgus was raised directly under the Sith Empire, born to the capital world of Droman Kos. He was top of his class in the Sith Academy, learning directly under his master Vindican. Together, he and his masters would be the first true Sith to reveal themselves in over a millennia. During the recapture of the original Sith homeworld, Korriban, they engaged in a heated duel with Battlemaster Kael Sandorach and his apprentice, Satil Shan. Though Shan would escape, Malgus would cut down her master, and at the fight's end, Malgus killed his own wounded master, taking the glory of Korriban's recapture for himself. Malgus would quickly establish his reputation in the ranks of the Sith, achieving victory after victory. It was not until the Republic recapture of Alderaan that he was defeated, crushed under an avalanche of rocks. But still, he carried on. Propelled by his rage, donning a new cybernetic suit to sustain his breathing, Malgus led the sack of the Jedi Temple. Though he would achieve victory, securing the Sith occupation of Coruscant, 
He was enraged by the treaty of peace that would follow. Malgus built himself through rage and conflict. His philosophy of power was that it can only be achieved through confrontation, not through diplomacy. After the supposed defeat of Emperor Vitiate, Malgus would make a play for the throne. Gathering the support of his followers, he became known as the False Emperor. Unfortunately, at the height of his power, just as he was about to establish a new rule, a Republic Strike Force team would kill and defeat him. Though Malgus was cut down before he could reach the height of his power, he was still distinguished as one of the greatest powerhouses of his time. Most of my versus videos, I'll be comparing these two at their prime. For Revan, I'll be taking him as he was in the light side. It is debatable when this is. I could take him from his first depiction in the Knights of the Old Republic game, or just before his splinter. With the help of Sleesk the Transocean, one of my subscribers, I decided to go with his depiction in the Old Republic MMO, before his light and dark side split off. For Malgus, I'll also be observing him during the events of the Old Republic MMO. Revan was a human of average height, somewhere around 2 meters tall. In his natural state, he was a respectable build, athletic but not bulky. Before finding his way in the Force again, he was able to contend and defeat other non-Force sensitives on Terrace in the competitive dueling arena. With the Force, he could augment his speed to immense levels, dodging blaster bolts, moving faster than one can speak words, and outmaneuvering the infamous Ichani. Unlike some other Sith and Jedi, Revan did not expend his energy needlessly, displaying fantastic levels of endurance. During the Mandalorian Wars, he brawled with several Mandalorians in large numbers. In the Dune Seas of Tatooine, he fought through many scavengers and Tusken Raiders without tiring. During his battle on the Starforge, he was able to cut through scores of Dark Jedi and Sith Acolytes before reaching Malak. Endurance was not an issue for Revan, a testament to his battlefield experience. Revan did not lack for his strength either. Though he was not particularly imposing, he was still able to defeat a pair of Tarent attacks in the Sith Academy. Tarent attacks were creatures noted for their force resistance and imposing figures, killing notable Jedi and Sith Masters alike. When one thinks of Revan, one does not often equate him with strength. We often look at him as a powerful force user, but his defeat of these creatures would suggest that he was extremely capable, even without the use of the force. Standing at over two meters tall, Darth Malgus was a human tank in strength and stature. Even without the use of the Force, his strength was devastating, crushing Jedi throats with his bare hands. With the Force, his augmented blows were bone crushing. His kicks would fold opponents in half, throwing them 10 meters through the air, splitting walls in half. Malgus' strength was also met with his astounding speed. He could twist and turn his blade so fast, it almost looked like a stationary shield. Augmented by the use of the Force, he was also capable of snatching thrown sabers out of the air, described as being as fast as a sand viper. However, his speed did come with limitations. While facing against Vin Zalo, one of the most notable Jedi Masters of the time, he could not muster up a counter offense against Zalo's rapid fire strikes. Even if Malgus could be outmatched in the game of speed, his resiliency and endurance more than made up for it. As with any tank, he not only had extreme firepower, but an indestructible shield. Malgus would be displayed tanking rocket blast, a grenade to the face, an explosion of a fuel canister, and a fucking avalanche of rocks. Not only could he shrug off otherwise fatal injuries, but he can carry on fighting as though they were merely flea bites. However, the man was still human. He was held together by a cybernetic suit to stabilize his breathing and failing lungs which would be a slight disadvantage in a fight.
In a physical contest, Revan loses in the categories of strength and resiliency. Revan's showings against the Tarent attacks would display an ability to at least resist Malgus, but his ultimate resiliency would fall before Malgus. As stated time and time again, Malgus was a tank. Nothing less than a killing blow would bring him down. This would bring in the contention of speed. Revan has faced against the immensely swift Ichani warriors and Emperor Vitiate. If Malgus had but one gaping weakness, it was with speed. But again, it would take a decisive blow from Revan to take him down. And considering Malgus's constitution, I find that less likely. For this, I give Darth Malgus the somewhat comfortable edge in physical abilities.